In this mini-series, we're trying to build program storage for this relay computer using a standard stereo audio cassette. And we've made excellent progress so far, from getting the clock and data pulses working, and even latching the bits to form a program byte. So for this video, my goal is to finish up the program loader, get it hooked up to the relay computer, and run a program that was loaded from a standard stereo audio cassette tape. We last left off with the theory that we can create some additional sequencer steps that will then be used for the pulses needed to write the byte to memory and advance the program counter. So now it's time to break out some new prototype boards, crack open another batch of relays, and start populating the boards. And this time around, I bought this huge kit of jumper wires to keep things a bit tidier, and now I wish I had started this build using this method because it already looks a thousand times better than the previous boards. Now because we're adding some additional sequencer steps, I'll need to shift the existing clock divider relays down by one to make the space needed to accommodate another divider relay. And then it's just a matter of connecting the new sequencer boards to the old ones. But once it was all together, well, it just didn't look right to me that the old board was still such a mess when compared to the new board. And I think the old board felt the same way. This week on Prototype Makeover, we meet Clack McStepperson, a hardworking prototype who gets the job done, but is unhappy with their disheveled appearance. Let's see what's in store for Clack on Prototype Makeover. Well, I've been a prototype board for a few days now, and recently I met this new fella who had a real clean-cut appearance. And once we were connected, it got me thinking that I want to be a better prototype board. Now that the makeover is done, let's get back to how we're going to write a program byte to memory. We'll start with the latch bits themselves, which are actually the easiest because we can simply tie the latch bit outputs directly to the data bus on the relay computer. And once that's done, we're going to add some clock cycles that will be used to drive the control lines needed to write the byte. So let's go through those in a bit more detail. The first step is to select the program counter, which gates the current program counter value to the address bus. And we can also use this same pulse to activate the bus to memory control line, which will gate our new program byte from the data bus to the memory card. Our next step is to perform a write to memory. And this takes the gated data bus value from the memory card and writes it to RAM. And since we're still gating the program counter to the address bus, it's also a good time to load the incrementer because in our last two steps, we will select the incremented value and then use that to advance the program counter. Now, we can see that we have a one-step delay between the first two control line activations and the second two. And this is needed because relays need some time to activate and settle between operations. And I'll flash up a link here to another video I did on relay timing in more detail. 
But back to the job at hand, we just need to create these four pulses and use some diode OR logic to keep these pulses high for multiple clock cycles. So I'll set up another breadboard with an LED to represent each of the new pulses and then wire in the appropriate steps from the sequencer. And then just add some trusty diodes and give it a whirl to confirm the pulses are all hunky-dory. Now, I want to run a quick test to make sure that the program counter is advancing properly before the sequencer moves back to the first step. Here we have it, the completed prototype audio program loader for the Relay computer. And it's gotten big enough that I've actually had to get a wider angle lens for my top-down camera because I couldn't fit this whole thing into frame. But now that it's here, I'll do a quick walkthrough of this board and then we can light it up and try writing some test bytes to the Relay computer's memory. So starting over here, we have the left and right speaker outputs coming from the amplifier that are driving the data and clock relays. And the clock relay is then fed into these clock dividers for the sequencer. And then below that, as before, we have the hard reset and the sequencer primer. On the sequencer, there's these first eight steps, which are using the blue LEDs that represent the bits to be loaded. And these are tied to the gating relays over here with their coils all tied to the data input relay back over here. And these just perform an AND function between the data input and the current sequencer step and then puts that result in one of these eight latch bits over here. And then the output of these latch bits is tied directly to the data bus on the relay computer. So most of this we've seen before, but here's what's new. Going back to the sequencer, it then moves on to these new steps with the green LEDs that drive our new diode logic over here, which create the pulses to activate these control lines needed to write the data bus value to memory on the relay computer, as well as advance the program counter so that it's pointing to the next location in memory. And then this step here activates this relay, which clears the latch bits. And then finally, I've just added this handy button here, which clears the program counter on the relay computer. And this basically sets our program memory pointer back to zero. So enough talk, let's fire it up and see if we can load some bytes into memory. Instead of recording to tape for this test, I'm going to first run the test tones from the Arduino through the cassette deck by using the record pause button. And this is so I can follow along with the Arduino test output. For more clarity during this test, I've divided this screen to show the expected Arduino output at the top, and then a synchronized view of the program loader board as it's receiving the tones. And I also have a camera pointed at the memory board indicator so that we can easily compare the bytes and memory addresses being written to. And I'll pause after a couple of bytes just to walk through it in more detail. All right, let's pause here so we can see what's going on. At this point, 
The program loader has correctly loaded this pattern here into the latch bits over here. In the next step of the sequencer, the select program counter and bus to memory control signals are set to high using the new pulse generator, which gates the data bus value to the memory card, which we can see here. And it definitely matches the value that was expected. So that is awesome. And because we've also selected the program counter, its value is placed on the address bus, which the memory card will use to store at this location here. And we should be seeing this address increment for each program byte being loaded. At the next sequencer step, a new pulse is activated, which now takes that gated value and writes it to memory. And we can see the memory write LED lit up as expected. This pulse also loads the incrementer with the current value on the address bus. The next step allows the settle time for the write to complete, and then it moves on to the next step, which is just used to clear the latch bits. And then it advances the memory pointer by selecting the incrementer and then loading that value into the program counter. So far, so good. Let's continue on with the remaining byte patterns. I figure that the current orientation of the prototype board and the relay computer just won't work to get the camera angles needed to capture everything that's going on. So I'm going to very carefully rotate this program loading masterpiece by 90 degrees and give it a slight shift to the left. And this is to make a bit more room so that I can move the tape deck over to the right side and then I'll just stack the amp on top of the deck. Then it's time to populate all of the available backplane slots with the cards we'll need to test the program. I haven't installed all of the sockets on these backplanes because I'm going to be creating a brand new backplane for this relay computer anyway, so I really don't want to use up any more of the 128 pin sockets if I really don't need to. But this means that I'm going to have to restrict my test code to do things that can get done with only eight boards in the machine. And speaking of test code, let's take a quick look at what the loaded program is going to do. It starts by loading a value of 15 into the A register, and then it copies that value into the B and D registers, and then copies that value from D into C. Then it clears A by loading a zero, and then copies that value to the other registers. It then loads a value of 10 into the B register, and then it does more of the same copying shenanigans as above. And then lastly, it should execute a halt that stops the clock, which is this circuit down here. On the clock board, I've added a sequencer primer button here on the right, and we can see now that it's primed and ready to go. On the left, I have a manual clock button, and then here I can start the clock. I can then halt the clock by pressing this button, which can also be activated by the halt instruction we mentioned previously. And for this grand finale test, I'm going to record the program from the Arduino to the cassette tape, and once it's loaded, I'll be kind and rewind and then disconnect and remove the Arduino from the equation.
We are now loading a program on the Relay computer using a standard two-channel or stereo audio cassette. And yeah, I look a little bit surprised because I am. It actually works. And I'm just kind of relishing the moment right now because this is something that I've been wanting to do for a long time time, at least since the beginning of the build on this Relay computer a couple of years ago. And it's also grown organically. Uh, I started off strong with schematics, uh, but then ended up just sort of adding diodes along the way to craft the signals and prevent some of the backfeeding that was occurring. So it's now time for me in behind the scenes to reverse engineer this and build out some proper schematics. And then the goal would be to have it on a PCB format like this one, but uh, maybe minus the edge card connector because I don't think I would need to have it plugging into the back plane directly. It's going to be more like a set top box sort of thing that uh, would allow it to have the external inputs coming in from the audio amplifier. This little mini-series was a pleasant distraction for me, and I hope it was for you too. But I think it's time to go back into working on the Relay computer, specifically around how the front panel is going to be arranged and the toggle switches and how all of that data entry stuff is going to work. So with that, thank you so much for following along, and I'm looking forward to seeing you next time.